This is a saltwater reef tank. Lucky for me, the 12 week reef lives only an hour from our good friend, Sam Parker. The King! From Parker's Reef YouTube channel. So let's dive right in. When it comes to the water in your saltwater aquarium, you've got two main options, natural seawater or artificial seawater. Natural seawater is collected directly from the ocean and delivered to you directly or to your favorite local aquarium by a reputable supplier. They've done the hard part of sourcing a good location, pumping it into their clean drums and filtering it mechanically for us. Already a massive point there. Yeah. It's come from the ocean, not a bay. Not your local port or harbor, but from a clean ocean. The positives is it contains the natural balance of minerals trace elements and beneficial microorganisms that are found in the ocean and it's cheap. The negatives, if it's not collected correctly, it can fluctuate from delivery to delivery. If you've got heavy rains in an area or storms, that can cause all sorts of dilution issues, not to mention nutrient and bacterial problems too. So only purchase from your local aquarium or from a reputable saltwater delivery company if you go down that route. Now onto artificial seawater. Artificial seawater is created by mixing pre-made salt with reverse osmosis deionized water, or RODI. But more on that later on in this video. The artificial salt and RO mix provides consistent salt water and allows you to control the salt parameters more precisely. Consider the availability, cost, and the desired level of control that you want when you're deciding which option is best for your setup. A good local fish store should have both options ready for you. Lucky for us, our local store has both options available and we've chosen the natural seawater approach. That just means for future water changes, all we need to do is pop past the store each month or so, take home two 20 liter jugs full of seawater and we're good to go. And we can switch to artificial seawater at a later time if we want anyway. And now what I've been waiting for this whole time, I finally get to fill the tank up. Whoa, whoa, Brady, I love the enthusiasm, man. But first, before we put the water in the tank, there's a few things we need to go through. Some all important water parameters. Perhaps we should go do some water tests. Oh, okay, show, show us. <laughs> So we have temperature, salinity, calcium, magnesium, and alkalinity. Okay, dude, so I see three vials and a wand. I'm guessing this, the salinity tester right here, tests salinity and is a temperature wand. Duh. And those three are magnesium, calcium, and our alkalinity test. Yeah, spot on. You're off on the right track. This one Yay! here is our digital salinity tester. Yep. And as you've touched on, it will also tell us temperatures. Now, temperature, I know you have added a heater to the tank in a previous week on another video, which is awesome. On a tank like this, that's going to take care of your temperature needs. And it's going to keep things around that 25 degree mark. Yep. Range for temperature on a reef tanks, somewhere between 24 and 26 Celsius is good. So right down the middle is a good spot to aim. Next up we've got salinity which you also measure on your wand there it's super super important it's the concentration of all of the salts that are in our tank and it is very very important for all of our other parameters this one i recommend testing very often especially when you're doing a water change or even if you are going to test any of your other elements it's important to make sure your salinity is right yeah i figured a salinity tester is an important thing for a salt water <laughs> tank yeah. it definitely yeah. is the really good thing is it's super, super easy to test and you can do it very quickly every day as you're going out the door to work just yep. to make sure things are good. It's really important to keep our salinity in a range that's gonna be as natural to the ocean as possible. You can measure it in a couple of different ways, either parts per thousand or in specific gravity. And in parts per thousand, we're looking around about 35 parts per thousand. In salinity, we're looking at around 1.026 specific gravity. It all sounds complicated, but I promise the device to test it is super easy and you'll learn that one very, very quickly. All right, awesome. So then if we sort out temperature and we've sorted out our salinity, what realistically do we need to test next? Yeah, with reef tanks, there's an absolute plethora of parameters you can test and you might get into that when you're well down the track. But for starting out, these three are really, really important to the health of our fish and our corals. All right, so first up is alkalinity. Now this one's really important for buffering our tank and maintaining a stable pH 
I also like to use it as a good measurement of coral growth. It's often used in the uptake of coral skeleton, so it's a really good indicator of things growing in the tank. Whoa. It's fairly easy to test, and the interesting thing with alkalinity is you've actually got a pretty broad range that you can work with. It's measured in DKH, which is an interesting measurement, mm -hmm. but anywhere between 7.5 and maybe up to about 12 DKH is fine, but the key thing there is to maintain a stable level. Okay, so you said alkalinity is to do with your coral growth. Does that mean when you get a lower reading on your alkalinity scale that your coral is growing better because it's absorbing that? Typically, yeah, our reef tank is a closed ecosystem, so elements can't really go anywhere other than into the coral that is in the tank. Some other elements with bacteria and things will use a little bit of alkalinity, okay. but the majority of it will be used in coral growth, and particularly in forming their skeletons. All right, okay, and then calcium? It is also a good indication of the coral growth, and much like our alkalinity, there's a decent range we can work with. Somewhere between 420 parts per million and 470 parts per million is a good range. But again, as long as it's stable, that's the key value there. All right, alkalinity and calcium are sorted. What are we doing for magnesium then? Yeah, magnesium is a really interesting element. It plays this really cool part between calcium and alkalinity. These two kind of work on a seesaw, almost counterbalancing each other. And if you keep your magnesium at an optimum level, which is somewhere between 1250 and 1450, again, stability is the key. But if you keep that up at that right level, it just settles down the violent swing on that seesaw between alkalinity and calcium. So it's a really critical element in maintaining these two elements. All right, so they all kind of go hand in hand in hand. Absolutely. So a good question then is, what are the three main important things to focus on in your saltwater tank? Yeah, awesome question. The first one is absolutely stability, the most important thing with any reef tank. All right, so keeping all your levels stable means your water stays stable. Cool, and what's the second one? Second one is definitely stability. Right, so keeping all of the levels stable and... Absolutely. Lesson one, lesson two, stability, stability. All right. Okay, well, what's the third? What's most important? I reckon you could probably guess from here. <laughs> yeah, <all right. laughs> stability, 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 guys. What is this to you? Oh, this is a measury tester. <laughs> ah, the measury tester. All right, that's awesome news. All the parameters are on point and ready to add to the tank. Sweet. So that means now... Corals and fish. Anyway, uh, hmm? so I can start filling this tank now then, right? Well, well, just before you do, there's one more thing we've got to cover. We touched on it briefly before, and that's RODI water. Okay. All right, we won't need these test kits anymore, but we do need an RODI unit. Hey, Angry Steve, have you got an RODI unit we can use? It's not small. It's not, but it is a little bit smaller once it comes out of the box. On your reef tank, it's super important that you have really good surface disruption so that you get fantastic gas exchange. It's really important we keep those oxygen levels as saturated as possible in our tank. Now, the downside to that is if you create a lot of surface disruption on the top of the water, you're gonna get a lot of evaporation. Now, what's really confusing or a little bit tricky for new people to get their head around is the water that evaporates out of your tank is pure water. All of those salts and all of those elements we tested before, they actually remain in the water and pure water leaves the tank. Right, so all the minerals and all the salts stay. Exactly. So to maintain that balance, when we top off the level in the tank, we need to use pure, fresh water, which is what our RODI unit produces. <laughs> So do you see many people adding salt water that, as their top-ups from their tanks? It's a pretty common mistake, and when your tank evaporates, if you add salt water, that first parameter we tested, the salinity, is going to go up and up and up. Okay, so how does it work? Cool. So an RIDI unit does come in a few different factors. This unit here is a four-step process. So we've got a sediment filter that takes out any big chunks in the water. We then go through a carbon block which pulls out a number of chemicals and other elements in the water. Then we get to the real magic, which is a reverse osmosis membrane. That pulls out any other impurities in the water. And then the final step is a deionization bead, which is the absolute last net, pulls out any remaining dissolved solids in that water and gives us that pure RO or pure fresh water to top off our reef tank. So nothing but H2O. Pure H2O. Once we're done with this, then we can fill the tank? Yeah, we're there. Okay, so once I've made a bunch of pure H2O, how do I then add that to my tank the right way? 
Yeah, awesome question. So because our reef tank's gonna evaporate 24-7, 365 days a year, it's not gonna be feasible for you to stand there with a jug, slowly tipping in a little <laughs> bit of fresh RO every time it evaporates. So thankfully in the world of reef keeping, a gadget has been devised called an automatic top-off unit that senses as soon as the water in your tank drops a little bit and adds a bit of RO to keep everything perfectly balanced. So you don't have to do anything. Thankfully, you don't have to do anything, but you do just have to ensure you keep a supply of fresh RODI to that system so that it operates perfectly. Now, thankfully for you, with your CADE system, it actually comes with a built-in ATO using a mechanical float. So we fill up the back chamber of this tank with that fresh RODI, and as soon as that water level drops in your CADE, it's gonna activate that float and add RODI into the system. All right, so what you just explained is called mechanical top-off. I've heard of something called electronic top-off. Yeah, it works in much the same way, but instead of having a mechanical float that goes down when your water level drops, it has an electronic sensor that sees when that water drops, and it actually activates a pump to turn on to pump water into the sump to maintain that level for you. Gotcha. Exact same thing, different system. Exactly. Two different ways to approach the same problem. All right, so now that's done, I can finally fill this tank up. Just before you do. One more thing we can go over, and that's just how to gently add this water to your aquarium, because if you just go pouring it straight in there, we're gonna have sand and things flying everywhere, which is gonna mess up all the beautiful work you've okay. done. Okay, good point. So, it's while it's not as critical when your tank is empty, but later down the track, when you've got fish and corals and other inhabitants in there, you don't wanna go creating a tidal wave, pouring all this water in there and stirring everything up. So we wanna have a look at different ways of adding the water as gently as we can to the aquarium. You can do that by either pouring it over a plate, over your hand, you could use a hose to direct the water onto like the back wall. You could even fill up your sump and then turn the pump on to pump it up to the display when you've got a bit of water in here. But it is worth just making sure that we try to add that water as gently as possible just so we don't stir everything up. You have a point. I'm glad we brought you. You have a point. The other thing we should talk about, I have seen all the other videos leading up to this point and I know that you did make the decision not to wash your sand. That's completely fine. However, when we add the water, it is gonna create a fair bit of uh, dust and, and whatnot in the water. It's gonna put our filter socks through a bit of work, which is totally fine, no problem at all. We don't have any inhabitants in the tank yet, but we will need to keep an eye on those filter socks and change them out when they clog up. Gotcha. Yeah, okay, so that's what they're there for. That's it. RO's done, we've tested the water, brought it all up to temperature, Levels are perfect. Can I please pour some water in this tank? Yeah? Yeah, let's do it. All right. The moment has finally come. Brady, we are getting near the point of the water going over the overflow, which means it's a great opportunity for us to get in close to the tank because we're going to test out all of that plumbing there to make sure there's no leaks when that water goes over there and ruin your beautiful floor here. But it's also a good opportunity for us to have a good look at the sump. Make sure the Delua Great White DC return pump is powered up and ready to go. You've got a nice controllable pump there, so it's going to make dialing in the return flow super easy to get that perfectly silent overflow operation. Awesome. We should probably also tighten all the fittings and make sure there's no, no, uh, no leaks, Nothing's gonna, nothing bad's gonna happen. Absolutely, we are getting to that critical point. Thankfully, salt water, if it does have any little leak, it's pretty good at sealing itself up. Nice. But if we can add it, a little bit of elbow <laughs> grease to it, it won't hurt. Hmm? Wait, so if you get a leak in salt water, it just crystallizes or? Very small leak will seal itself in salt water over time. Obviously, less leaks the better, but uh, something like a beautiful cage tank like this is not gonna leak on us, no trouble at all. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Fingers crossed. 911, what's your emergency? Somebody didn't fix the plumbing properly. Is it clutching, Steve? <laughs> Talk to me, Steve. We're good. When do we stop filling this? Yeah, so as you can see, the water has now gone down our overflow and into our sump. It's made its way past the filter sock chamber, into the skimmer chamber, 
has then overflowed here into our media chamber and is now very slowly making its way into its final destination, which is the return pump chamber. We can see the uh, float valve back there, which is the mechanical float valve. Once that comes up pretty much horizontal, that's the level we want in this system. We can turn the return pump on there and get this basically in a closed loop where it's pumping water from the bottom up to the top, overflowing back down to the bottom again. All right. So when that float pump is horizontal, we're gonna make a beeline for that tap. <laughs> yeah, once that gets there, it's got a little bit of forgiveness in there, but uh, once that happens, we'll turn this, uh, turn the tap off, we'll turn the pump on and uh, get the system running. Awesome, I'm so keen for that. Okay, so we have a filled and clearing tank We've still got a bucket here of RO water that I know needs to go into the auto top up, yeah? Correct, yeah, we've got a chamber back here on the caves which you can just pour the water in there. That'll fill up and put that mechanical top off to use. Salt water's in, fresh water's in. Tank's gonna take a little while to settle, but the water's flowing. This was almost too easy to set up, Sam. It's almost like you've done this before. Funny you should say that. I have had a bit of experience setting up tanks. I do actually have a YouTube channel called Parker's Reef where I've got a huge number of videos covering tank setups, covering some footage of my own dream reef tank, store tours, tours of other people's already set up tanks. So yeah, I've had a little bit of experience. <laughs> Dude, thanks so much for your help. This has been awesome. Appreciate it. I'm really excited to be part of the build. It's um, something really cool. and I can't wait to see where the 12 week reef goes. All right guys, that's the end of week four. The tank is finally filled and wet. We learnt about water parameters. We met Sam from Parker's Reef. And now it's time for us to pack up and go home. Next week, we're gonna learn about kickstarting the biological cycle so we can add livestock and corals. Hello See and welcome then. to tonight's show. <laughs> this is like video one spot. So what are the main parameters you're looking for? Mag. Yep. Calcium. Salinity. Yep. Calcium. Yep. Carbon hardness. Affluent. Yep. Temp. Yep. Get yourself some RO water. For For the auto top up unit. Why do you need auto top up unit? Two. Make sure <laughs> the water level stays at the same height and the salinity doesn't increase. Why would the salinity increase and why is the water leaving the tank? Reef tanks need heaps of flow apparently. Lots of surface agitation. So lots of evaporation is happening 24-7. What, what do you need? Don't get out of it. Nice! Auto top up means that as the water evaporates, uh, salt stays and so RO water is just pure H2O meaning that you're keeping the water level higher and higher as the evaporation happens. So it's basically just replacing any lost water. Thank you and um, good